Jack and Nori, Jack and Nori, what's the story, Jack and Nori? The Salacious Monkey and the Boar. Long, long ago, there lived in the province of Shinshin, in Japan, a travelling monkey man, who earned his living by taking around a monkey and showing off the animal tricks. One evening, the man came home in a very bad temper and told his wife to send for the butcher the next morning. The wife was very bewildered and asked her husband, Why do you wish me to send for a butcher? It's no use taking that monkey round any longer. He's too old and forgets his tricks. I beat him with my stick or I know how, but he won't dance properly. I must sell him to the butcher and make what money out of him I can. There's nothing else to be done. The woman felt very sorry for the monkey, for the poor little animal, and pleaded for her husband to spare the monkey. Her pleading was all in vain. A man was determined to sell him to the butcher. And the monkey was in the next room. I have heard every word of conversation. He soon understood that he was to be killed, and he said to himself, Barbarous indeed is my master. Here I have served him faithfully for years. Instead of allowing me to end my days comfortably in peace, he's going to let me cut, be cut up by the butcher, and um, my poor body be roasted and stewed and eaten. Well, to wait it may. What am I to do? Oh, a bright thought has struck me. There is, I know, a wild boar living in the forest nearby. I have heard tell of his wisdom. Perhaps. If I go to him and tell him the straight I am in, he'll give me his counsel. I'll go and try. There was no time to lose. The monkey slipped out of the house and ran as quickly as he could to the forest to find the boar. The boar was at home. The monkey began his tail well at once. Good, Mr. Boar. I have heard your excellent wisdom. I am in great trouble. You alone can help me. I have grown old in the service of my master, and because I cannot dance properly now, he tends to sell me to the butcher. What do you advise me to do? I know how clever you are. The boar was pleased at the factory and determined to help the monkey. He thought for a little while and said, Hasn't your master a baby? Oh, yes, said the monkey. He's a, he has one infant son. Doesn't it lie on, by the door in the morning? When your mistress begins to work for the day, well, I will come round early, and when I see the opportunity, I will seize the child and run off with it. What well, then, said the monkey, why the mother will be a tremendous scare, and before your master and mistress know what to do, you must run after me and rescue the child and take it home safely to his parents. You will see that when the butcher comes, they won't have the heart to sell you. The hump monkey thanked the ball many times and went back. And then went home. He did not sleep much that night, as you may imagine, for thinking of the morrow. His life depended on whether the boar's plan succeeded or not. He was first up, waiting anxiously for what was to happen. It seemed to him a very long time his master's wife going to move about and open the shutters to let in the light of day. Then all happened as the boar had planned. Mother placed her child near the boards as usual, while she tidied up the house and got her, up. her breakfast ready. The child was cooling happily in the morning sunlight, dabbing on the mats and playing in the light and the shadow. Suddenly there was a noise in the porch and a loud cry from the child. Her mother ran out from the kitchen to the spot, only just in time to see the ball disappearing through the gate with her child in its clutch. She flung out her hands with a loud cry of despair and rushed into the room, her husband still sleeping soundly. He sat up slowly and rubbed his eyes and constantly demanded what his wife was making all the noise about. When that time the man was alive to what had happened, they both got outside the gate. The boar had got well away, but they saw the monkey running after the thief as hard as his legs would carry him. Both the man and wife were moved by, to admiration at the plucky contact of the salacious monkey, and gratitude knew no bounds when the faithful monkey brought the child safely back to the arms. Here, said the wife, this is the animal you want to kill. 
Yet the monkey didn't hadn't been here, we should have lost our child forever. You're right, wife, for, one, for once, said Ryan, as he carried a child into the house. You may send the butcher back when he comes, and they'll give us all a good breakfast, and a monkey too. When the butcher arrived, he sent away an order for some ball meat in the evening, for the evening dinner. The master's petted, the monkey was petted, and lived the rest of his days in peace, nor did his master ever strike him again.